Why he have his butt out like that? I thought he was just sagging real hard. I thought he was getting fellatio. Yeah, though. people thought he was getting fellatio, and you know he had his pants down a little bit of leather. He had no zipper in the back. Oh, you mean in the front? Oh, I that would be difficult. I didn't know now. you got fellatio in the back. He's got it. What you saying? <laughs> hold on, Lil D. Hold on, hold on. What up, y'all? It's DJ M. And I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. We are the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club on BET. What's happening? Peace to the planet. It is Tuesday. Dana McIntyre's name has been called. See, Dana just got sentenced to two years for getting a fraudulent PPP loan. Now, one of my favorite forms of entertainment in regards to PPP loans is two things. One, seeing how much money y'all had the audacity to be asking for. And two, what y'all spent the money on? Well, needless to say, my guy Dana exceeded all my entertainment expectations. Let's go to NBC Boston for the report, please. Dana McIntyre applied for funding to help his Beverly restaurant, but lied about the number of employees he had on staff. Instead, they say he took the money, he sold the pizza shop, and then bought and fixed up an alpaca farm in Vermont, among other things. Mm. So you can imagine hearing of this apparent scam has many local businesses and individuals just feeling really frustrated. Drop on the clues box with Dana McIntyre. Mm -mm -mm. Dana said, if we gonna do it, we gonna do it, damn it. Uh, number one, $660,000 and fraudulent PPP loans, and he used the money to open up an alpaca farm. Now, this is my problem and why Dana must get donkey today, and it says a lot about the society we live in. Dana is 59 years old. He already had his own pizzeria place, so he had a business. I don't know if his business was profitable uh, during COVID. You know, a lot of reports say it wasn't, and that's what led him to commit the crime he committed. In fact, he said in his sentencing uh, memorandum that he was a single father of two children whose pizzeria was barely profitable before the pandemic. And he became uh, afraid. You know what I mean? He got, he got afraid because he didn't need the uncertainty of the times. Look, man, if you got the capital to open a business and the business is barely profitable, you won. And if you do take a hit during the pandemic, that's what the PPP loans were supposed to be for. And the fact you got $660,000 back in PPP loans, but didn't put it towards your actual business, the actual pizzeria, the employees, payroll expenses, you already have a business. Okay, and if you use PPP loans for that business, then your loan is forgiven. But you decided to say, F the pizzeria. You want to invest in alpacas. Okay, this is what's frustrating me about you, Dana. You are smart, okay, because you already opened up your own pizzeria. But the fact you had the idea to open up an alpaca farm, dropping the clues bombs for Dana again. Listen, man, alpacas are used primarily for fiber production, but they're also a meat source in South America. Either way, you can get to the money having an alpaca farm, okay? Alpaca farms are profitable, high value, low maintenance, not to mention the unique benefits in the form of tax advantages, income deferral, investment compounding. But I know you know all of this, Dana. That's why you did it, and that's why you getting donkier today, because you smarter than this. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump day? <laughs> Okay, so obviously we know Krishan luckily had a baby boy yesterday. The baby was healthy. Everything is good. Blueface wasn't there. She didn't want him there, but oh, he had a lot to say. So he said, if she don't take my son serious and make that her main focus and priority for at least 30 days, I'm a file for custody. You've been warned. Um, he goes on to say, I feel bad for my son at this point. He's a junior to his mom. He ain't got to be named after me, but at least put some thought into it. Because, you know, she named the baby Chris Shine. Not Blue giving her a 30-day notice like he's a landlord. Not Blue acting like he a parent when he asked a six-year-old if he was gay. Peace to the planet. It's Thursday. So you took an eight, nine-year break from music. Yes, that's what true. What made you do that? Honestly, I do music when I really feel it. Mm -hmm. okay. When something... Mm -hmm happens where I could actually get in the vocal booth and feel it and do it. And it's not motivated by money. What was the moment that said, I want to start doing it again? Was it your daughter? No, it was, it was the divorce. It was the unexpected divorce. So that's where Beautiful Pain solely came from. Yes. Okay. Can R&B artists only write through the lens of pain though? Because you had a lot of good moments over no. the last eight, nine years. Well, Nobody want to hear that. Though. The beautiful, mm. no, here's the thing, mm. right? There is nothing about my album where I'm coming into this thing specifically trying to uh, use my voice, stage, and platform and music to say, F him, F her. Mm -hmm. I could do bad, but I, that's not my. Everything about this album is a divorce deterrent. Did you say peace, BET? Oh, BET, peace. See y'all later. <laughs>